to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the fantasy hitman here today. It's good to be back. Yeah, welcome back into Thank the you. building. Thank you. But due to the ongoing feud between you and Jason Moore, the... Yeah, uh, that dude sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me and you today. Jason's uh, Jason's got a few days away from the show after the big fight, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where my voice went. It was all the shouting at Jason. I know. I know. You and Jason. I, just, I gave him the business. Just two serious guys. I was like, I told you, Rico Dowdle. Right. It's a Dowdle. How dare you Dowdle. Yeah. Well, look. Me um, Rico. Switch. He wasn't going to be here for the comeuppance. That's for darn sure. <laughs> I mean, it is the, it is the uh, unfortunately, the window to victory lap was only 24 hours from his, I understand his performance. So I you, you weren't here yesterday. I mean, and obviously you didn't listen to the show. So we spent a lot of time giving you a lot of credit. Okay, good. I hope so. I hope that's what happened. Most of the show was just Mike was right. <laughs> <laughs> At least right now. You're right right now. And sometimes that's all you need. You look, just, you just got to have was, one. It was, um, it's looking good for Rico Dowdle. He's going to be a big part of our waiver show today. So, not congratulations. Not on any of my waivers. Tell you that much, everybody. No, no, no. You've held him. <laughs> you've had him for three, four years. <laughs> I think you've been. Uh, you you might get a percentage of whatever contract he signs. I do. Yeah. At this Next. point in time, I'm on the payroll. <laughs> He's you're the hype man. His agent reached out and said, "We need somebody to talk about this guy." Because otherwise they're going to give Zeke all these carries, and nobody wants that. No. But we do have a waiver show today. Happy to have you joining us. Uh, you can follow the show over on X at the FF Ballers. Follow Jason Wrong at Jason FFL. Follow Mike Wright at yeah. FF Hitman. Follow me at Andy Holloway. You can join our uh, Discord channel. It's free to join. It's over 50,000 strong, and that's ballersdiscord.com. I want to mention that from time to time. If you need people to talk to, uh, panic with, gloat to, I mean, gloating is, gloating's great. It's about eighty-five percent of things. Sometimes the week goes by and you and you you face your brother-in-law, and how'd that go? Pretty great. Oh no! Pretty, pretty. Oh no, Josh! Pretty great. How you feeling, Josh? You were you were talking a big game in league of record and. Uh, Couple of L's this week? Yeah, just a couple. Oh, yeah, we got the league, league median. Got the league median in there. Take <laughs> double L's. Um, what else do we got going on? We got a Monday night football. There was game. a game, sort of. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty. I was pretty disgusted by that game. It's dude. The Kansas City Chiefs defense is, it's terrible, for us. It's really good for the NFL purposes. That's about everything you would want to have. I mean, you're a 5-0 team. You just held the Saints to 13 points. And they, not only do they shut down your number one wide receiver, which we last week on the show was, I brought up, hey, is Chris Olave going to get that treatment? He we, he probably is. So I thought that treatment required Legereus Sneed, and it does not. No, no, no. They figured out a way that they can just bracket and take away the number one option, and that was... Look, that's why don't panic on Chris Olave. This is just this is part of the experience. If you're going to play the Chiefs and you're number one, number one wide receiver, they're probably going to shut you down. Even worse than for us is generally when we have that, then we have a run funnel and our running backs dominate. No, N no, they don't permit that. No, they do not. Alvin Kamara, eleven for twenty six on the ground, six for forty through the air. So he was like he was okay ish for fantasy, but. The same or the 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 Chiefs are shutting down guys on the ground, and they're shutting down number one wide receivers. It's like this is a problem. Yeah, I mean they are an outstanding defense. You mentioned it; they're one of two teams going into the bye now, five and zero with the Vikings. Patrick Mahomes' numbers now, because of the the 
formation of this team and the departure of the big play. And Mike, he is at 11.8% of the time giving you 20 or more points now yeah. over 17 weeks. He has not had a top 12 finish this year. 13, 14, 15, 17, 15. Yeah. He is averaging 15 fantasy points a game, and he is not a factor for fantasy football at all. And, you know, they lose Legereus Sneed, yet they can still shut you down. They lose Rashi Rice, and yet they take the corpses of Kareem Hunt and Juju Smith-Schuster, <laughs> who put up numbers oh last gosh, night. The numbers dude. for those players were the best numbers that they've put up in over 1,400 days each. Like Juju. Seven for 130. Yeah, huh? we have to – he has forced us to talk about him robust, oh, yeah. robustly today. Yep. And then Kareem Hunt, 27 carries, 102 yards. This is not a pushover defense, by the way. The Saints are not a pushover defense. But they looked like it last night against a bunch of elder statesmen. Just they off were the running, couch. They were running four tight ends goodness, during this game. Goodness gracious. Jody Fortson and Noah Gray and Travis Kelsey – in trips formation and they were still picking people apart. They had a second and 34 they picked up. <laughs> so I whiffed the almost upsets this week. It looked okay Although for a bit. I went from almost upset to very upset at the performance by the Saints, which was anemic. And Rashid Shahid had the big game. At this point, Chris Olave is going to be a drop candidate in people's minds. Oh, don't do that. Because the performance this year has been wide receiver 89-26-12, 28-81. Yeah, no, no, no. Olave's, he's not a drop. He's fine. He's okay. Uh, yeah. Fine might be the way to describe him fine. as a I mean, player. Week one was terrible. That was the Shahid nonsense where they scored all the points right away. Uh, the next week was a blowout again. But four for 81, six for 86, eight for 87. Like, Is this just who he is, though? Is who he is a, a wide receiver two uh, – this the version, Terry McLaurin path. This version of Olave with Derek Carr. This is probably what it is. But it, it's still, you know, even though you he, wide receiver twenty six and twenty eight. But though I mean that was over double digit points both times. Like he's Olave is still solid, but and I think there is a path of of huge upside on a weekly basis. But Tampa Bay next week, that's fine. But then it's Denver. Ooh. Nobody runs the football more than the Saints. The the Saints are the last ranked passing team. Number one in running. So you're taking opportunities away as well. Sure. But yeah, it was it was um I mean, like, it hey. was a proper thrashing by the Chiefs. The only I mean the Saints had one incredible interception by the most yeah. most athletic <laughs> oversized Kyler Murray yeah. I've ever seen. <laughs> I call boy. him Kyler Murray because his steps were tiny. Big boy Every got them wheels. Was, bah, 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 bah. It was awesome. And then they had one big play to Rashid Shahid. Yes. And then otherwise the offense couldn't do anything. Yep. Yeah. And now now Derek Carr could be out. Juwan Juwan did okay. Five for thirty one. I mean that was In this economy. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Five catches. That was that that was second on the team. And then Foster stole the touchdown, unfortunately. Because if you got five for thirty and a tutty, you'd be you'd be feeling all right. And then the I mean it's Travis Kelsey is it's we're back, baby. We are so back with Rice's injury. Ten targets, nine for seventy. I think that's for me. That's the biggest takeaway is you assumed that would happen, but you still needed to. Hey, give me a couple games of it. It's it's back. It's right back to Kelsey. And if you get bonus points for laterals mid play, oh my goodness, Kelsey's going to put up some big numbers for you. Do, like, is what does Coach Reed feel when every time that happens? Because it works. Travis Kelsey's very good at it. I think the only way to get him to rarely do it is to tell him you hate it. I but I think secretly inside yeah, he's fine but, with it. But how do you hate it when they, when it keeps being successful? I don't know because eventually, <laughs> you know, it's like it's like hitting a couple bats, man. Yeah, fair. You know, you the house is going to take the I mean, money at some point. Watching the replay of it, at least to me, uh, uh, maybe I I miss saw it. But look, P. Ryan looked like he was looking Travis Kelsey dead in the eyes. I like, thought it looked planned. Of like, yeah. I know the ball is coming, and I, I, I don't know if it was like that was the play call or if P. Ryan's just like, I've seen what Kelsey does. I've seen him do this, so I better be ready. Yeah, I think it works. And I'm – Oh, I've Andy Reid said they practice that every day? 
Mr. Yeah, halftime. Oh, I missed that. Uh, I, I think that, I mean, we saw it with Gibbs. The mid-play lateral, I I don't understand why. To me, the play is smart because – It's just high risk. But is it more high risk than a pitch to your running back? I mean, if you run it properly, I, I, I mean, both of those so. plays would be fumbles. But, yeah, you're trusting not your quarterback to do it. But if you practice it um, – It's wild, man. It is. All right, let's talk news because we've, we've got big, oh, yeah, we do. big news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. We woke up to the news that the Jets have fired Coach Robert Sala. Yeah. So This will definitely fix all the problems. I mean, they, this is the first time that they have ever fired a, uh, the current owner, Woody Johnson, of the Jets. Has never fired a coach midseason. Because it just... It doesn't work. You know, like the data says these teams, they they rally behind the new coach for a game. The win percentage after the first game is actually pretty good. But as a whole, uh, it, Kyle did some research on it, and he found the only team that changed coaches midway through and, and made the playoffs was the 2021 Las Vegas Raiders. That was Gruden. Gruden was not let go because of performance. He was let go because of off-the-field stuff. And then that team managed to get into the playoff they lost in the wild card but it's this one's so it's you don't difficult. normally get like the data is normally going to be towards the back part of the season when the interim right. takes over this is a little bit different two and three uh it's been hard to watch them play football yeah. But they're right. I mean, the division's there for the taking. I mean, the oh, yes. The Dolphins are beat up and destroyed. The Bills look horrendous right now on offense. And the Jets are sitting right there. So, you know, they're. I think they're a team that has potential. People think – the Jets fans think that the, we're sitting here just hating on Aaron Rodgers because yesterday we were making fun of the bitter beer face. I also said we, we're rooting for something good to happen there. I want to see Rodgers be vintage Rodgers during the last year or two we right. get to watch him play football. And I want Garrett Wilson to succeed, and I want Brees Hall to not look like he's oh, an eighth-round draft pick. Oh, boy. So, I, you know, but Nathaniel Hackett's still there, the guy calling the plays. Yeah, the problem is not – like the defense has been great. That's what Sala does is you're, you're struggling on offense. So, I mean, I'd, who knows? Who Why knows don't I have the work? name of the interim head coach here in the doc? Uh, we need. Know. We can find it. That uh, we did get that announcement this morning. If you can, Jeff Ulbrick, is that right? I think that's right. Is it correct? Whether okay. I pronounced it right, we'll find out soon. All right. So no more Robert Sala, and then we're getting towards the end of the Devonte Adams saga. It seems because multiple reports have said that they are very incentivized to finish a deal with Devonte Adams. The last thing I saw was that there's one there's only one team that was willing to meet the second round demand. <laughs> right. And nobody wants to trade Devontae Adams to this team because it's the Chiefs. It's uh, okay. if I were the Chiefs, I would do the move like I've done this in fantasy. You can have a first. You're going for a three peat. Sure. And your team is running out Juju Smith Schuster and Justin Watson. You can have a first. Make it so that all the other teams offering the Raiders are offering a third, and you're the team in the division that offers a first, and and then overpower them. I find these things always, <clears throat> excuse me, so funny. It's just like we're gonna get we're gonna trade this player, and we don't want to regret it even more if if he goes to our rival and then he's really good. I would not trade if I were the Raiders in division to the Chiefs. I couldn't do it. It's just I I because it hel it helps your division rival. Then what? I mean, you fix your problem. Then figure out what the problem is and don't trade him or or ship him off to the <laughs> NFC. It's, it's it's I don't know. It's very very funny to me when teams are like, no, it the best thing, but isn't the best thing for their team to get a higher pick back and to take one from your division rival? Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, you you can like, look well, at it. We'll just go, just get get it done. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it, it that trade makes, with whoever's going to give you the best improvement to your team. Yeah, if you think you're taking somebody for a ride on a trade, you <laughs> might as well take your division. You're like, rival. yeah, we got we we got a third round for Adams. Look, we sure we could have had a second and been way better, but screw those guys. Okay, that is the most Mike Wright thing you actually do yeah, yes. in our drafts. You do it all the time. Yes, you stick 
people with a lack of draft picks so they get fab penalties. Right, a fab penalty. That doesn't this, help this, you though. <laughs> but it's this is not I'm not running an NFL franchise. Darn right you're not. <laughs> All right. We also know that uh Amari Cooper might not be long for the Cleveland Browns. Yep. We got numbers this morning. Forty five percent of Amari Cooper's targets are uncatchable. Is that bad? That's pretty bad. That's like take his league leading or near league leading targets and cut them in half. Because catchable targets and targets, you know, like one of the Dontavian Wicks targets in the last game, deflected pass at the line of scrimmage. Why do they count that? I don't know. I don't know. It's silly. I went and watched that I did I watched all the Wicks targets too. And there was the play like Are you sure? I mean, are you sure that was going to Wicks? Like, how can you count that against his catch percentage? I don't know. Because the target's going to hurt his catch percentage, right? Uh, I mean, that's how that number's calculated. Yeah, yeah, it would. Stupid. All right, the Eagles expect... Oh, by the way, on the Cooper front, Chiefs are a destination. But you know another team that was mentioned for Amari Cooper that will make you roll your eyes in the back of your head and laugh? What, is it Dallas? It's Dallas. Oh, come on now. Because Amari Cooper's still an elite wide receiver. It's funny. All right. Uh, the latest news we have on Rashi Rice, by the way, is that his season is over. They're going to confirm it in a scope. Um, LCL injury. Derek Carr, the oblique last night. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. Both expected back against the Browns this week. That's excellent news. Jalen Hurts might look better than he's looked. Travis Etienne got popped in the shoulder again, and that's why he was held out at the end of the game. Tank Bigsby. I'm winking, podcast audio people. <laughs> <laughs> Wink. I, I I believe I think I Travis I think he's still the guy, but at some point, at some point when the backup is doing this when he touches the ball, yeah, I mean it's dumb to not get him the ball. We've seen players have explosive plays and hyper efficiency on limited touches many 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 times. I mean, of course, last year we were literally living this out with Devon Achan. It is not we're not getting Devon Achan for seventy four yards every touch anymore. Um, if Bigsby gets more work, his numbers will come down, but he's looked awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's why I made him a my guy, if you remember. <laughs> Andy Holloway did it. Yep. Andy Holloway loves him. The courage it took. Andy Holloway. Yeah, he can uh, – thanks, Bigsby. All right, D'Amico Ryans doesn't know when Joe Mixon is going to play football. This has been frustrating because Joe Mixon came back to a limited practice a week and a half ago, and it's like, oh, he's on track to play. Then he doesn't play again. And did you see the numbers for Daria Gumbawale last week? I sat there and I had the most frustrating morning deciding between Cam Akers and Zach Charbonnet in place of Joe Mixon in our league of oh, records. sweet Lord. And the first, I didn't realize it was that bad. The first thing that happens is Daria Gumbawale comes out for every snap yeah, in the first yeah. drive. And I, I wanted to die. <laughs> you know, not to be hyperbolic about yeah, it, yeah, but I course. wanted to expire. And then... Cam Akers ends up with a touchdown. He gets two carries on the first drive. They both go for 10 yards. He scores. But right now, it's like Agumbo Ali had the better game. Agumbo Ali should be brought up on the waiver show today. And if, if Joe Mixon is this endless day-to-day, week-to-week. By the way, day-to-day -day shouldn't mean three weeks. Well, yeah, I, I think he's jumped back and forth a few times. D'Amico lying. Oh, got him. Yeah, I, I feel like he was week-to-week, -week, and then he was day-to-day. And then he was back to week to week, but now we're day to day again. Speaking of week to week, that's the status for Nico Collins right now. Oh. Uh, he burns too bright. Khalil Shakir is in the day to day category. Okay. Romeo Dobbs back at practice and maybe, just maybe, a sneaky little flex pickup. Yeah. It, it, because Romeo Dobbs, if you didn't follow the, the saga of the weekend or uh, whatever, the week of. He was having he was missing practice with per it was listed as personal. And we're like, oh, you know, usually that's a there's a family issue that the Prayers player has up, to brother. Go. Yeah, you know, like seriously, I was like, oh, that uh, that sucks for Dobbs. And it was no, he was just chilling at home, not going to practice, but not telling them. But he was like, he's mad about his role in the passing game, which he's the one he's out there all the time. That's what people point to, but. I mean, like, the targets aren't even that bad. He's on pace they're for okay. 85. I but mean, it's like when what Romeo is seeing is guys like Jane, Jane Reed is – look, he's a, a great player. So I'm, I'm not taking away from it. But I'm saying – The he, best. He doesn't – he's not on every snap. And then in the snaps he goes in, like they target Jane Reed. And you're like, 
Romeo's like, come on, man, let's scheme some stuff up for 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 old Dobbs over here. It's Dobbs time. You think someone threw a wherefore art thou Romeo thing out there when he didn't show up at practice? I probably. Like, I feel like probably big uh, big Shakespeare people yeah, up there yeah, in Green Bay. Big time. Um, Zay Jones, Cardinals receiver, back from the reserve suspended list, could be involved in Arizona. Antonio Pierce is oh, – hold on. What are we right, doing? I want to read this verbatim and get your reaction. <laughs> Raiders head coach Antonio Pierce has told reporters that he's still evaluating who will be the starting quarterback, Gardner or Aiden O'Connell. For now, the team is treating it like a competition before deciding who will start versus the Steelers in week six. So to actively do a competition, that means you're going to have to split the reps. At practice, your limited amount of practice time. These aren't the kind of guys, Mike, that need all the reps to be <laughs> successful. <laughs> the ones you're not sure who's good enough to be the starting quarterback, so we're going to cut their play time in half or practice time when they have to be ready for an NFL game this weekend? Like, what are we doing here? What well, are we doing here? They're they're playing one of those soft defenses, though. They face the Steelers this week. They don't <laughs> need the reps. Okay. Okay. Pierce why, is doing. Why, why some, do certain teams? He's just, doing weird stuff. Why do certain teams just do certain stuff all the time? It's like they get injections when they join the franchise, so that they can carry out the same DNA that they've had forever. Yeah, is uh, Pierce has done a lot of things. Like I think he is a good coach. Maybe he just needs to, but like be a coordinator, man. Some dude. Some dudes are incredible coordinators, and there's. The coach of being a, or the job of being a head coach is so different, and it's you know managing humans, where it, not all coordinators have that as part of their personality. Of I Mike's, have to manage all Mike these Singletary? guys. You remember him in San Francisco? Yeah, it, it reminds me of that, where it's like the hyper aggressive, uh, I'm on your level stick works for right. a couple weeks like he was an interim guy that came in and dominated yes he did but right now they're on you know he's Devonte adams is running out of town they don't have a quarterback the uh the hit rate right now on not offensive head coaches it's pretty bad right now in terms of how they perform in terms yeah in terms of them performing and keeping their job like it's it's not impossible like D'Amico ryan's it's looking great right now but if you look across what has happened since like 2018, it's it's not good. All right. Well, um, that'll do it for today's news and notes presented, as always, by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to hit the waiver wire. All right. A lot of names to talk about, a lot of moves to make. Get your team ready for week six. Get that trajectory going towards a Foot Clan title. Welcome to the Waiver Wire, presented by Amazon Business. We get the Chargers, Eagles, Lions, and Titans back from the bye week, and we lose all our Chiefs and Rams and Dolphins and Vikings. Oof. And I, for one, I was telling my son this last night. If I'm going to miss a week of the Dolphins, it's going to be a week while we wait for Tua to come back. I much prefer that because the fantasy points are going to be very similar on the bye. Yeah, but it doesn't count. That doesn't count to his IR. It doesn't count to his IR, but it counts in terms of like if I'm going to miss recovering. a week. If I miss a week, I want to miss a week while they don't have him. And, you know, Tua is planning on being back. I mean, you had. I've never been so happy with 6 for 69 from Tyreek Hill. Right. That's a great that's a great line based on what we were what we were staring down with Tyler Huntley. But no Dolphins, no Vikings, no Rams, no Chiefs. Let's begin at running back. Now, there are five names that are majority owned that I'm gonna mention really quickly that you should just check your league, but roster percentages above about fifty eight percent or higher. Your man Yes, sir. Rico Dowdle. Rico! Excited about the Detroit matchup this week? No. Uh, but I wasn't excited about Pittsburgh either. Chase Brown, I who looks great, I, uh, but 71% rostered. As much as I like Rico, I think I would take Chase Brown I if, saw they were, if they were both there. I saw he's number one on your, your rankings. Um, 
The other names that are majority rostered, Madison at 63%, Trey Sermon, who could get another start, although he looked rather abysmal to me, and then Braylon Allen, uh, 58% rostered. So those names, those are probably taken in your leagues, but we mention them, and we include them because there's 30-plus percent for many of these that they're not rostered. The big names, though, this week that are going to make the headlines, Tank Bigsby at running back, Tyrone Tracy Jr., who went 18 for 129 against Seattle, and then uh, I think those are the two big ones, really. Yeah, I agree. And then and then Ty Chandler is one that you're going to have to pay attention to, but he doesn't play this week. It's just how bad is the Aaron Jones injury, and do people ignore Ty Chandler? Is he cheap and available where he could be a hold and maybe ends up getting a start? Yeah, it for Ty Chandler, it could be like if you're if you're already low on priority or you've spent that shmoney, spent that fab. Ty Chandler could be the fact that they're on by. It could be a gift of we don't know how, how long Aaron Jones will be out. Um, it's a bye week, and then it's Detroit, so that's a tough matchup. But then after that, it 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 does open up for Ty Chandler. Should he be the starter? Uh, so I mean, I he should be added in almost almost every single league. It's just you're not you're not going to dump a huge amount of fab. He was the guy like when Aaron Jones went down. Ty Chandler took the overwhelming majority of snaps and, and the work. The number one running back on the week this past week was Tank Bixby. He was 13 for 101, had a 65-yard touchdown, had a second touchdown, had a pass catch. Uh, Etienne had six catches last week. Yeah, it's it's still going to be um, a timeshare. How, the- how much are you spending on Tank Bixby? Because not a ton. Not a ton. No, not a, not a ton. Chicago this week, then New England, Green Bay. I Because I don't think he will overtake – ETN. I, I I think it'll be I, – I believe them when they say ETN got a little bit banged up, so that's why we gave Bigsby some run there at the end. I think that the that Bigsby is going to keep closing the timeshare, uh, so it will be more of a split, but that's not necessarily – it's going to be great for, for Tank Bigsby. Tyrone Tracy is – He's, I think he's a little bit more interesting because, because yeah, he's a long term potential. Exactly. Where this week with Cincinnati, I, we don't know the extent of the groin injury for Devin Singletary, but can Ty like I don't think Tate can overtake Travis Etienne, but Tyrone Tracy. I mean, they, this team is they're going to have to figure some stuff out. There's there is a chance that Tracy takes over the 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 starting job for the Giants. The, like. It's long odds, but every all these guys were talking long odds of if someone can actually take over, you have to be so much better than the than the the starter. But Tracy, and you know that's one game down, and he looks spectacular. He look he has juice. Where Devin Singletary is a solid player, but Singletary doesn't have that type of juice. They've looked very different on the field. They seem critical of Singletary, not getting it done in a couple of games. The dead cap, like he is, he did sign a three year deal. Uh, for what it's worth, um, the dead cap is six million next year for Devin Singletary, but you could see it flip, and they could try to get more explosiveness from the young guy. Do you have it? Do you have Tank atop or or Tracy? You know, it's it's a tough one. I I probably have Tank a little bit higher. Uh, this is just, you know, is Etn going to continue to be banged up? He missed practice last week before he got popped in the shoulder again. Bigsby is going to have more of a touchdown opportunity with that offense. I lean that way. Those are the top two names. Beyond that, you're getting in, you know, you talked about Chandler, but you're getting into, you know, the stash and backup category. Like you could probably get Jalen Wright for nothing if you wanted to give that a go. Which he is, like Raheem Mostert is back, but Devon Achan did have the concussion. He has the bye week to get through it, but it's not a guarantee. 13 for 86 for Jalen Wright this last week, and he looked He's looked much better he looks on the good. ground. Yeah, and then um like it, HN on the ground, it's not it's 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 not been what we have hoped for on the season. He is on the season, he's at three point three. If you want the bare bottom but you can start him category, Daria Goomba Wale, fifteen carries. It's the seven targets six, I'm more interested in. Yeah, I mean he ended up in the end zone two weeks ago, but six for fifty seven through the air. Nico Collins' injury means that they need more weapons in the passing game, and he's going to sneak through waivers with almost no cost. Yeah, and then the the low, like if you just, you're 
You're desperate at running back. You're not high in the priority. You can't get anybody. It's a desperation play, but Roshan Johnson, it's against Jacksonville, so the matchup is good, and you're just hoping that they get dragged down inside the five and Roshan keeps getting that goal line work. One name in the drop candidates that I want to talk about at running back because people are asking about him that I think I have a prescription for is Jerome Ford. People are asking about Jerome Ford. Last week was atrocious. Deonta Foreman was on the field a bunch. Nick Chubb's coming back at some point here, and the offense looks awful. I would be trying to package Jerome Ford with another player or pick to go acquire somebody else now. I don't think the future is going to be bright for Jerome Ford. They, I, yeah, I don't disagree with that. They just don't. It, his usage is weird. Yeah, it is. Like, was this was this injury related? Because look, nine for forty seven on the ground against Washington. Like, that's not. Well, the game script got out of hand. Yeah, but it's a, the, the way that they've used him. You know, he's a workhorse in week one. He's the backup in week two. Oh, he's back. He's everything. In the next couple of weeks, and then now he's now he's kind of the backup again. Is the Browns are all over the place with usage? You want to turn the page to wide receivers? Yes. Surprisingly enough, Darnell Mooney is only rostered in thirty-one percent of leagues. How much do we got to talk about Darnell Mooney? I mean, sixteen. What are targets. we doing? Is he in your mind an every week star? Yeah, he's in every he's in every week wide receiver three. So he gets Carolina, and then Seattle, then Tampa. He plays almost every snap of the game, and he's 31% rostered. Is he, is he your number one? He is, at wide receiver. How much fab? I, I, mean, I think we put it in there at 15 to 25% of fab. I, I, if you need a guy, though. Yeah, everyone needs different things at this point of the season. We're going into, what, week six? Um, some For some teams, their starting roster. And it's, so here's a way to think about it. If your starting roster is looking really good, Take on some of the stashes. Don't don't pay up for a player who, like Mooney. I I wouldn't, it, like, if if you're really solid. But Darnell Mooney is over here. Of if you are hurting and you're looking at your bye weeks coming up, that he's such a a usable player. It's weird. I can't believe he's only thirty one percent rostered. That's that's insane to me. The guy's been he's been playing well all year long. Yeah, this was this was the big big game that we got last week. So maybe people had just been hesitant, and we've had like five days now to you know kind of feel the impact of that big monster performance yeah, that's fair. before then. Cousins was kind of in doubt too. You know, fifty four percent roster. Josh Downs, who looked amazing. The real problem for Josh Downs is the quarterback conundrum yeah. because you know we highlighted this yesterday, Mike. I don't know if you heard it. I'm ready to roll. But we talked about pace of play and the differential between Anthony Richardson and plays per game and Joe Flacco and plays per game and performance. Josh Downs is very talented. He's looked outstanding. He's looked like their best receiver, to be honest. That's fine. Um, you know, Alec Pierce catches – Alec Pierce is the hardest player to ever put into a waiver <laughs> wire list because he's always like three for 100 and two touchdowns. But I feel like if I ever play him, he's not doing anything. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean – three of five so far so it, it games has, wise yeah it yeah, has worked out for him but yeah he's the 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 target share he's a is a great deep threat i mean seven percent of targets last week seven percent the week before but they're so but yeah yeah no they're really they're high so value if it targets. comes through but this this is like that's last year's rashid shaheed yep where you see the talent you're and you're wishing hey why 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 can't this player get more targets but because there's guys like Michael Pittman and Josh Downs. If I if you needed a start this week, are you with me on Jalen Tolbert, who 10 targets, has looked good in his reps, no Brandon Cooks, plays Detroit, who's likely to stifle the running game, so the passing game is going to be crucial. Would you go Jalen Tolbert, or would you, you know, would you look at somebody like Michael Wilson, who had a big week? We talked about how Marvin Harrison's catch percentage is below 50%. Yeah. Michael Wilson's up over 75%. Um, you know, the Cardinals have a tough matchup against Green Bay. They should have to throw it. Which is the better start to you, Tolbert this week or Wilson? Oof. I, I think I would go – I think I'll go Tolbert there. It's, that one's pretty close. Uh, he just – he has – he's finally looking the part. 
Look, he was with the third round pick, but it's kind of hard to remember what we all thought of Jalen Tolbert. I liked him a lot, and then he's just been essentially doing nothing for the you know missed half his first season. Plays 17 games in year two, but only sees 36 targets. And he's already up to 29 through five games. And the Brandon Cooks injury is an immediate opportunity here. And we, Dallas and Detroit, feels like they are more likely to hit that out, hit that shootout type of a game over Green Bay and Arizona. I'm with you. I think Tolbert's got a window here to perform and maybe even earn a more permanent role. Yes. It's not like he didn't have any games this year. He's oh, had a yeah. couple of wide receiver three games. Dallas Detroit's at fifty two and a half right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, oh, that sounds about beautiful. Right. Trey Tucker didn't perform this week. Likely to see Devontae Adams leave town. Juju. What do you do with Juju on the waiver wire right now? He's he's rostered basically nowhere. He had the seven for one thirty game. We know that you know, it was kind of one big play, but it also I mean, he's involved. Twenty four percent of the targets, but they're going into a bye week. So is this that category you just mentioned? You're happy yep. with your team and yep. you need a stash. One hundred percent. What would you spend up on him? Juju? Uh like, do you believe it? I believe that the usage is real. I it's don't. It's going to be this way the rest of the year. Yeah, like, but but I mean, fifty yard gains for Juju at this point. That seems like a like a high bar for him to duplicate, but I think that the targets should be there. Like, I mean, it's do you want just Justin Watson? He was on the field for seventy no. percent snaps, but he didn't have a single target. No, I don't. I mean, this is when Juju was on the Chiefs a couple years ago. He was very usable. A couple players that have been picked up recently that are going into the buy that I wonder if you would just drop. Jordan Whittington. Oh, he's so tough. And Tutu Atwell, because Cooper Cup's going to be back after the bye week. Right. Week seven. And then some point after we'll get um, Puka. Puka. Boy, between Puka and Tutu, and it's, yeah, no. you know. But Whittington had a big game, seven for 89. Start of the week. Yeah, yeah, but in both our DraftKings lineups. 92% of snaps. I probably would. I'd let Tutu go for sure. I would going into the that. bye week, but I, I'd probably hang on to Whittington. It's really difficult to stash a, uh, a player like Whittington, but he is a rookie, and he has had back-to-back -back strong games. <clears throat> and so if you, Cooper, you have to pay Cooper might not be back. And, there, and there, so. is that, there is that chance, and then there's the chance that when, when Cooper Cup and Pook are back, Whittington's the third guy. Like, they talked about him all offseason, and now he's coming through. I don't think you put him back on the bench. Alan Lazard is interesting because of the 10 targets and the fact that he seems to be a go-to receiver in the red zone. Is Alan Lazard on your – I mean, he's had a number three, number 24, number 27 week. I feel like if Tolbert's in play, Lazard's probably in play. He's he's usable. but well, that I receive was... 20 on the year. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I, I guess – Rodgers threw the ball 54 times. That's that's the hard part is this team, would the way that they play, it seems like the, the 30 attempts, 35, that's closer to where they would want him to be. And then the past two weeks they've had to air it out. Maybe that's why Sala got canned because they don't like what's going on. I mean, Lazard is – I'm not prioritizing him by, by any means, but he's a – you get to Saturday and you're like, oh, man, I got to find someone to put him. Yeah, Lazard is – he has he has the connection that we're hoping Garrett Wilson gets to. Eight red zone targets, which is the sixth most in the NFL, but the Jets are also the favorites to get Devontae oh, yeah, Adams. That would uh that would change it. What do you uh, Garrett Wilson just had a career week. Twenty two targets, big game. Jets are favorites to land Adams. Wilson had not looked good. Would you strategically trade Wilson right now off of that game? It oh man. It's a very fair question. I think I would hold Garrett Wilson. That was that was exactly what the doctor ordered of just the we're going to get in the ball and we're in, we're going to get in the ball in short space too. Like the, we're not seeing Garrett Wilson at least last week really get down the field, which is part of why if Devonte Adams comes into town, yeah, he'll take up a, a good piece of the target pie, but Adams 
is excellent going downfield where maybe Garrett Wilson just needs to be – this is where he needs to operate for the time being in his career. So I don't think that Adams coming to town is is like, oh, we're done. Garrett Wilson's – it's it's over. It's not happening. It could be it could be fine for Would Garrett Wilson. Would you trade him for Drake London? Oh, man. With that hanging over the team? Yeah, I don't mind it. It's kind of a lateral move, and it's – it's it's hard to not overreact when you saw Kirk Cousins just go crazy on an island game. Would you trade him for Marvin Harrison? I would rather – oh, my gosh, Garrett or Marvin? Yeah, I think I'd go Marv. Touchdown upside. They, there are some names, some drop candidates that are popping in here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the Mooney or this guy. Okay. Rest of season. Olave? No, give me Olave. Juwan Jennings? Yeah, give me Mooney. Keenan? <laughs> big game from DJ Moore. It, seems it like, was. Seems like a big game from Keenan is a long ways away. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I don't mind Mooney over Keenan. Tank Dell. Tank Dell has been one of the bigger busts of the season. He is sitting after four played games as the wide receiver seventy two, seven points, one point, eight points, five points. It's really disappointing. Nico's going to miss. So you you look at him and you say, hey. But Tank Dell should be good. He should be, but Nico also played 13% of that game. Right. And Tank Dell ended at 4 for 38. Maybe, you know, with the week of practice and changing how the game plan's going to be, if they're planning to be without Nico. He was also coming off an injury. I think for... But I would take Mooney. Wow. Just I think Mooney's this better, week and long term? Yeah, both. I think that might be the right call. Keon Coleman or Mooney? I, I, I like I'm gonna Mooney. Hold Ke I'm going to hold Keon Coleman there. Um, Dontavian Wicks, who yeah, I'm gonna can't go. quite catch the football. Look, other players have have really struggled with drops throughout their career. Mike Evans being one of them. When you are, if you are good enough, the drops get get forgiven. Like it, some players just have a higher drop rate. Now he needs to produce more, but I'm I'm still in with Wicks against Arizona this week. I don't expect Christian Watson to be back from the ankle. And I think that Wicks remains a strong play. It just did, if watching the targets of Dontavian Wicks, a lot was Jordan Love's fault too. Jordan Love has looked bad for two weeks. Yeah, he has he has made some bad decisions. He has made some bad throws. Like us, he's ad, gone off platform. Admittedly, I will say I don't know for like the the first two misses for for Wicks were uh were were deep out routes. Yeah, where he didn't cut it close. Well, yeah, it may, maybe maybe Wicks rounded it too much the route. So I, I can't say a hundred percent, but it looked like with how this how much space was there, that looks like Jordan Love has to get a better ball there. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, we'll come back talk some uh, of that bad economy. <laughs> talk about the tight end position in just a minute. All right, to chase or not to chase, Mike, Tucker Craft rostered in 65% of leagues. He was a start of the week. He was a pickup last week because you hoped and dreamed of a 4 for 88 and 2, and that's what you got with Tucker Craft. So if he was still out there, how yeah. hard in the pain are you going? What's the long-term view of Tucker Craft? Uh, I think it's excellent. I would go pretty hard after him. Week one was bizarre where he was out there the whole time. And only saw 9% of the targets, but it was very clear he was running ahead of Musgrave. Since then, the targets, the target share, even including the the games with uh with Willis, it's gone up every single week. So this I'm not chasing two touchdowns on four catches. I'm chasing a 20% target share from Jordan Love. Is it troubling at all that I might be rooting for him to only have one good game? Tucker? So, yeah, so that I can call him a craft oh. single. Ooh, but he's had two good yeah. games already, so it's all ruined. It, when, when you're in the tight end two and then tight end one, dang it! I'm counting this. That's craft double. Um, Tyler Conklin back into form last week, six for fifty-five. Fifty-five. Rostered in only thirty percent of leagues, he's a spot start candidate. Yeah, he's he's not. He's a Band-Aid. And I think Zach Ertz is in the same category. Ertz had eight targets. He only caught two of them, but eight targets at tight end, and one of them was a seam route that it was a Jaden Daniels mistake, and he would have had about a 70-yard touchdown in this game. Mm -hmm. 
which is weird for Zach Ertz, but eight targets to me you can chase. And I think he hit most waiver wires. He's he's fine. But... Look, Mike, fine is amazing. Oh, I, I get tight it. End. He, they... Would you start Conklin over Andrews? Um, Man, that's a – I don't know what to make of the Mark Andrews game. Baltimore had – the the matchup this week is a fifty two and a half point over under. Yeah, against it's Washington. Washington. Um, the Mark Andrews game, he was non existent through three and a third. Yep. He ends up four for fifty five. Charlie Kohler scores. He's mm -hmm. the third ranked tight end on his own team right now. He could have scored on his one opportunity. That would have changed our if he if he goes six for fifty seven and a touchdown, yes. You're pretty much having a, or I'm sorry, not six for fifty seven. What was he? Four for fifty five. So four for fifty seven and a touchdown. You're probably having a different conversation. Yeah, people would be more willing to go back in. I don't know how I don't think I'd start I'd start Kraft over him, but I probably wouldn't go Conklin or Ertz I'm, or yeah, Houghton or Strange. I'm okay with that. It's is it, it Mark Andrews, it looks like it'll just be it's game script. Where he was not involved. Yeah, but that's not. And, I'm, that no, I know that's not great. That's no, what no, I'm no, saying. But, I'm, I, but I don't buy that. I don't think that is. I, I, I didn't think it held water last week, and I don't think it holds water this week. Okay. Because they just put up nine thousand points in this game. The game script in this game was not run the football. Now, are you saying I'm that saying, you looked at this game as a success? Because to me, I look at no. a game where you score thirty-eight, where you had to throw the ball whatever forty plus times. And Andrews barely does anything. That's how I'm looking at it. Is the, the first half, Mark Andrews was not involved because the game was close, and they just they were running and play, and they were happy. So wait, to play what defense. game script helps Andrews though? Because the game script when, where when they, the Cincinnati Bengals are all of a sudden up by two scores. That's not a common game script for Baltimore. No, it's not. We're, yeah. we're saying the same thing. Okay, okay. I'm saying it was like to that me, sucks. Like that's a really bad p position for for Mark Andrews to be in. He is a talented player. He is. I mean, like Kohler only ran six routes, so it was Mark Andrews. Yeah, but was, you, you never had a Kohler. No, no, you didn't, and and likely ran way more routes than Mark Andrews, and scored twice. To me, it's like saying, I've been saying this before: the gap between where Andrews is now and where you'd want him to be is too far to go. I think I I agree with and that. It, it, and if the game script where they're running the football all the time in their head means no Andrews, and the game script where they are even means no Andrews. Right. And the only game script where you get a little Andrews is if you're down multiple scores and you're Baltimore, that is threading the needle on on an opportunity to be happy. Yes. I'm in so, I'm in agreement of that. Uh David Njoku got re injured. He came back, caught the first target, was gonna get load managed in this game, and then Load managed himself with an injury. Do we have any update, Al? On I haven't seen anything. David Njoku, who's supposed to get an MRI on the knee. I'll take a look. I still think Njoku, like somebody said, is he a drop candidate? I mean, yes and no. Like Tucker Craft is now a, vo a, a super valuable tight end. David Njoku, with the opportunity, especially if Cooper leaves town, David Njoku could be the number one target for Cleveland. Yeah. It's just whether I, his no, health I, is there. Uh, with the with the rumors of Amari Cooper, if you can afford to hold Najoku, I think I would. But it's it's tough. It, I mean, especially if he misses next week. If you don't have IR, eh, that's that, that's a that's a really tough call. Defensively this week, Houston plays New England. New England might be playing Drake May this week, so Houston's defense against the the worst offense in football. With a rookie, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, Philly comes back from there by. They get to play Deshaun Watson. That one I like a lot. Who loves He loves getting sacked by mm -hmm. trying to do too much. See, when you try to do too much, the outcome of you doing too much at least needs to be good. If you do bad things, you should do less. Yep, you have to trade huge plays. If you're going to take a sack, you got to be hitting huge plays. What if you don't, though? What if you don't hit them? Yeah, but you get paid anyways. Uh, then your sounds like your team made made some uh, really bad decisions. Pittsburgh heavily rostered, but play Las Vegas, and they don't know who they're playing at quarterback, and they don't have Devonte Adams, and so they are a mess. Um, they're a must start. Denver, a lot of people picked them up last week, but if they're out there, they're the number two defense in fantasy. They play the Chargers, who have struggled to move the ball, and they play really slow. This was somebody that we pointed out yesterday. 
Not a lot of plays for the Chargers. It lowers your danger yeah. of a big game, and the Broncos are just elite on defense. They're three and two. Their their offense has not looked like anything worth watching. They're three and two because that defense is outstanding. And on the other side, the Chargers play Denver. So both of those are I mean, Bo Nix. Yeah. No, no. So the Raiders play Pittsburgh. So, you know, there's some talk this morning about Russell Wilson. I still think they're they're gonna give Russell Wilson a shot at quarterback at some point here soon. I don't think that I think people are enamored with the fantasy value that Fields has provided at times. But I don't think, you know, I don't think Pittsburgh can go where they want to go with Justin Fields. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, they've been winning. Or Russell Wilson, but we don't know the or, Russell yeah, yeah. part. The I mean, those first three weeks, you know, it was basically one score victories, except for the Chargers. They won by 10, and then they're now they're losing by just a field goal. I don't know. You were pointing out in those first three weeks, though, they played some pretty bad opponents. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fresh Kirk Cousins, Bo Nix, banged up Justin Herbert. And then the indie game, which they they lost that one. By so, the no, way, no. yeah, it was tough. Yeah, if you want to see all of our waiver wire rankings, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. And if you would like a custom waiver rankings specific to your league, we build that out in the ultimate dashboard. And you can learn about that at jointhefoot.com and check out all of the perks and resources. It's a great time to get involved. You get an extra episode of the show. You get market share and stream finder and target share reports. You get um, our consistency charts, which we haven't talked a lot about, but it lets you map out how players perform over time so you can balance your roster with some explosive players, some players that are more consistent. You can kind of vet that out. It's great for trade analyzation. These are all perks that we're working on improving and building out, including moving the ultimate dashboard to our mobile app here soon. And you can learn all about that, including those custom waiver ranks at jointhefoot.com. All right. Today's waiver wire was brought to you by Amazon Business. Everyone could use more time. Thankfully, Amazon Business offers smart business buying solutions so you can spend more time growing your business and less time doing the admin. You can see why they call it smart. Learn more at amazonbusiness.com. Full stream ahead. All right, Mike. We know that um, Jay Grizz yeah. in the building today, the cardboard. I'm Jay Grizz. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. it is. I'm Jay Grizz. Definitely, definitely not a reason why I haven't mentioned him yet today. The the people want it, man. Well, look, Jay Grizz is going to be with us all week, so kind of, you know, be careful on the trigger finger over there. But Caleb Williams is the obvious pick. For the for Jay Grizz, of course, a uh, big Bears fan, and genuinely, Caleb looked amazing last week. Trending in the right direction, he's got all of his receivers back. I love what Odunze does with the ball after the catch, and then DJ Moore has been elite. Big week for Williams, and he plays Jacksonville, so yeah, which that's a legit streamer. Yeah, I would say Carolina makes people look pretty good. Yeah, um, and but the Jags they could make Caleb look pretty good as well. Um, I'm gonna take the layup here. Yeah, I saw that you did this. I, got, I was because I got. Him I didn't first. have the. Uh, you know, I had the integrity not to. Speaking of know. Carolina making teams look pretty good, Kirk Cousins, hot off of 500 passing yards, will be playing against the Carolina Panthers. What, what would you What would you spend on Fab to get Kirk Cousins? Because you know, Carolina, Seattle coming up. I don't think he had the big game. I'm I'm not gonna overdo it. Um. Because look, the it, different player, different situation, but it's it's like the Derek Carr week three. Derek Carr was coming off of two games. Where you're like, I can't believe this. This can't be the new normal for the Saints, can it? No. Can't. And the answer was no. It it cannot. Uh, Five hundred yards for Kirk Cousins is that's not happening. That that was that was the record, right? He broke Matt Ryan's record. He did. So I'm not expecting that, but he should have a good game. In terms of what am I going to spend? I mean, ten percent of Fab. If you need a quarterback, if you if you really need that, like your roster's looking good, but your quarterback is on by this week, then I, I can see it. But, but the the quarterback on by this week, by the way, probably not the case. Well, maybe maybe Mahomes. Yeah, Mahomes. Like if you had Mahomes and you don't have another quarterback, I'd spend up on Cousins because he might be your quarterback rest of the year. But Darnold and uh, you know Tua and Stafford like, probably not your quarterback. Darnold is. 
Darnold's part of the reason, like guys like that, where I I don't want to just drop a huge amount of fab on on Cousins. Was like, oh, I'd like to play him this week, but I would like to pick up Sam Darnold and play like he, the the stretch of games coming up for the Minnesota Vikings. I would love to get on on that too. Uh, I would say Joe Flacco is my favorite streamer this week. If he gets to start again, he just cooks with the opportunity. If he doesn't, you could go, you could go to Geno Smith, fairly heavily rostered. But if he's out there Thursday night, San Francisco, he's been really good. Top ten quarterback in four or five weeks. That would be the uh, Patrick Mahomes zero five weeks stat. <laughs> But I like Flacco, and then I would turn to Geno Smith. But I like Cousins above, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. the premier pickup. And Caleb Williams I like as well. The uh, the nasty one is Daniel Jones. Here's the nasty Assuming one. Assuming that, that Malik is back and they get to play against the Bengals, it, the process is good for that one. Dude, Results may vary. Two weeks ago I said get out of the Patrick Mahomes universe. Uh-huh. Then Rashi Rice gets hurt. Is he a drop? Oh, Could you drop Patrick Mahomes? If nobody's biting because of five weeks of ineptitude, you should be able to trade him still. You should, you should he was over to, 300 yards. The way you do that is take Mahomes and then take, you know, take another player and go offer for a slight upgrade on Mahomes. Go, go offer Mahomes, and if Mooney is just an extra resource you have, go offer Mahomes and Mooney for another quarterback. Yeah, it, like – I think that it's okay aesthetically if you're look because you have Mahomes in there. It looks like you've lost the trade because you're like, oh, I'm trading Mahomes and whatever for yep. this one player. Mahomes is it, it's just it's been so long where la this we were at this point last year about halfway through of like you should probably go get Mahomes because he's Patrick Mahomes. He of course he will turn it around and the schedule is amazing and then he never did. Would you would you trade Mahomes and Godwin for Kyler? No. I would not. That's way too much. Way for too me. much. Yeah. Okay. I was trying. I was trying to find some. So Mahomes and Mooney probably doesn't get that done though. You probably can't go get Kyler for that. Uh, you, you might be able to. Maybe that's the type of that's the type of move I want you to think about. Otherwise, though, if you couldn't trade him, everyone says, "Ha ha, no." He hits a waiver wire, right? <laughs> Dude, I can't handle talking about. I know. I can't, I can't handle the like the, the advice is is it. Just trade him. Just find yeah. a way to trade. Wait for a big game and Make, trade him. I don't know if you'll get a big game. Yeah, I know. I, that's that's the problem. Is I don't know if the big game will ever come. But it's Patrick Mahomes, and we've seen him be five hundred and five or whatever. Just things that he can't do. Eleven percent of the time above twenty points. Yeah, eleven percent. I. That's not startable, man. It's all emotional right now with Patrick Mahomes, and you just have to look yourself in the eye, look in the mirror, and say, "Hey." This is what we're going to do with Patrick Mahomes, and we're okay with it. Say or either I'm going to ride it out, I think he'll turn it around, or I'm going to trade him. And regardless of that, I, I, I have to be emotionally okay with that decision. You weren't here yesterday. I didn't get to get your reaction on the Josh Allen season so far. Oh. Hey. Because two good games, three terrible games. Did you realize he went nine for thirty in the in the game yesterday? I did, yeah. And I, I two went days ago. I went and watched back, and it was, it was like, what are what, are, what we are we doing? What are we doing here? So, um, is he a player that you are looking to capitalize on the name? Like, do you believe what Jason's I, live show bold prediction was that this, you know, the second half of the year is going to be tough? You know, Shakir, no viable weapons. They missed Diggs. Obviously, they could get Adams, but. So looking schedule-wise, because that's what you got to do here, next week is on the road against the Jets with the potential of the one-game hoorah of the team, uh, you know, the, the uptick as they support the new coach. That one could be rough. Then Tennessee, Seattle, Miami, the Colts, and the Chiefs. Ah, he, I think Josh Allen is a really interesting buy low right now. The schedule is not – that's not what you're buying – you're just buying the talents of Josh Allen, who can be like Josh Allen can still be the top three, a top three quarterback on any given week where it feels low odds for for Patrick Mahomes. So this like this is the only time you can get a player like Josh Allen. If he's cooking, you're you will never get him. So th that's, that's the why, side you come down on. Yeah, I think that that's where 
as you, opposed to cap as opposed to trading him away. Yeah, I I would be more on the side of I'm going to hope that the talent figures it out and I you know like it's like Lamar, right? Can you go get Lamar right now? No. Probably not. It would no be, way. He's number one. It would be outrageously expensive. But we know that the history of Lamar is there's probably some games coming up here where it's going to be rough. But it, So it's it's timing timing the market. Lamar and or being, Allen rest of the season? Who would you rather have? Uh, Lamar. Okay. I, Just make it. I think. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got hungry for more tomorrow. We got the th Thursday night preview. Got some mailbag questions and more. Maybe we'll have some Devontae Adams news to talk about. Hopefully. And then Thursday and Friday, we'll get into the starts of the week, the matchups, the wheel of shame, and a whole lot more. And again, one more invitation to head over to jointhefoot.com, join the Foot Clan, become a supporter of the show, and get access to a ton of cool resources, including the ultimate dashboard and a custom waiver rankings. That is going to do it. That is going to do it for today. Thank you for joining us. Shout out to the deucers over there, the mustached deucer in the corner hiding the caterpillar. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.